this idea to make an exhibition dedicated to Merit Oppenheim is very old in my mind, but only three years ago we came to the conclusion that we would be able to do it. And one of the reasons is because this year in October she would have become 100 and she was born in Berlin. So there were several reasons why it was a good idea to do it this year. Despite the fact that she was born in Berlin and she was a member of the Academy of Arts in Berlin also, she got a great prize of the city of Berlin, but there was no big exhibition dedicated to her work. I do not know why. So I think we have the duty to present Merit Oppenheim's work because it's worldwide very well known, but uh, the public did not have the chance to see it. Many of the works are hidden in private collections. You cannot go just to a museum and see a good collection of uh, the works of Merit Oppenheim. So this is the chance. Merit Oppenheim was very young when she decided to leave Switzerland for Paris. Uh, which was really the metropole and the heart of art in the 1930s and whom she met there um, it was the surrealist movement artists like Max Ernst, like uh, Giacometti, like André Breton, like Léonard Fini and she um, developed her art in a yeah let's say in a dialogue with this movement um, what interested her was to um, not just um, make hold in front of reality, but to widen reality towards the unconscious, towards the game, to show things that are normally in the inner side of the, of the, of the mind, yeah. or not evident. When you start to to look over the work of Merit Oppenheim, something is very clear for the first moment. Uh, she has a very heterogeneous um, style uh, with a lot of topics, um, and she, it's really a work that is not that you, you may not um, present in a chronological uh, way. So I decided to look for the main topics and topics like self-portraiture. That is not a direct one, not a naturalistic one, but a hidden one. Um, the erotic object, um, the way she uses daily objects and, yeah, and makes them to something completely, uh, completely different. Um, nature, metamorphosis, and the world of fairy tale, let's say. Uh, also, um, her painting that is that is not visible. Uh, that is invisible, um, also uh, the relation between image and text, and also play as a, yeah, as a form of artistic practice. important for me is to show really the whole range of media she uses and yeah there are of course writings uh, that you can hear in the exhibition listen to her voice uh, reading her poems um, and also showing her sketches for fashion and for design a very interesting part in her work also because it's in a dialogue with her autonomous work um, and to make sure and to make evident that everything is in a network, everything is connected in a network, every work, every media. It's not, she has not an, uh, an understanding that is based on hi hierarchies, but it's really um, everything is part of her work, equal part of her work. Oppenheim was a f one of the first uh, women artists who uh, worked with topics of masquerade, role play, of conventional roles of what a woman needs to be and needs to do. 
and um, yeah, she, esta she established a vocabulary that became very important for the next generations of, of feminist artists. And it was also her person. She lived without compromise, without compromise to society, to functions a woman um, has to fulfill, uh, without compromise towards um, the art market. She never developed a signature style, for example. Uh, and also um, towards special movements, also towards the feminist movement. So she was a very important identification figure for the feminist movement, but her credo was um, art has no sex. Um, art is always female as well as male. Art is androgyn. So, um, yeah, she was an important figure for them, but she found her own theory um, how to solve the question or the problem problematic of gender. Yeah, in, in 1983, Mary Doppenheim made um, a plan in 12 sketches, colored sketches, um, where she designed her ideal exhibition for the Kunsthalle in Bern for, for a special exhibition um, that in a modified version also came to Berlin. Um, and I took one of the walls she designed, she constructed, and really, yeah, reconstructed it in the exhibition as a kind of exhibition in the exhibition, a meta, meta exhibition. And where you can see how she put her works or thought, thought her works, brought her works together um, without chronology, um, very different subjects, um, very early paintings and late works on, on nature, for example, just to, yeah, to make evident how she thought about her own art. She was more an artist who used very many different uh, approaches to doing works of art. She sculpted, she painted, and she wrote poems. So she was one of these multimedia artists before we had these words. And I think she worked in a way which made it maybe, at the time these works were made, difficult to understand her. I think now, with all these new developments in fine arts and in contemporary art, she's much more, she can be understood much better than before. I think this is a kind of rediscovery. 